morning, Sunday morning, about seven o'clock. Uh, we've started giving uh, Hereford cows a bit of barley. I don't know, the silage we're, uh, we're on at the moment isn't the best. I don't know, I think the grass quality, I don't know. Anyway, it isn't the best, so <coughs> I had a calf a couple of days ago. Very, very small calf, worried we were going to lose him. In fact, he laid out. He laid out for uh, two days without doing now, little bull calf. Anyways, uh, we gave him an antibiotic yesterday and that seemed to buck him up a little bit and uh, anyways, that on and at it now, he really is. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, a bit of a worry, I thought we were going to lose him, I really did. Uh, but I didn't ring anybody, I just thought I'll tackle this bugger on my own. I'd give it three cc's of al, um, almais, almaisin LA. And we gave it some colostrum, which it didn't really want. I think it was either premature or it's just a tiny calf and it just struggled for the first couple of days. Now it's on and at it, so and she's a brilliant mother, really is. While uh, while cows are having their um, their breakfast, uh, their barley, and their, we're giving them, we're introducing them onto fodder beet and all. Um, the calves have a right play about. They have a right bray about. I mean, I don't think you can tell at this stage what these calves are going to end up like, but they've certainly got a lot of uh, um, energy, you know. I think as long as now, well, I am tempting fate, but this is number two. This is the first one we got. Well, I had to bottle a bit. It's uh, it's fine, and I've decided what I think. I think I've decided all bull, all bulls. We've turned into bullocks by ringing them. All effer calves, I think there's three so far. Uh, we're gonna, I think I'm gonna keep. I think it's just the start of something what I wanna, uh, of where I wanna go. You know, I think these effer calves, about the time they're 15, 16 months old and ready to be put in, uh, in calf. Um, it'll be time for a new bull or another bull anyway, so. I would say another bull because we'll probably be up to 20 or 30 cows by then and uh, and then we'll go for the next 30 because yeah my plan is for 60 I mean I can see some of you saying bloody hell you're running before you walk but I mean I don't know these ventures if you don't get stuck in from start what's the point um, so it's a long term thing I mean we won't see like a, a proper revenue from these cows for I won't say five years and you might think, bloody hell, five years, I won't bother. But by the time I've built this up and got a, uh, a, flow, of, uh, a, a flow of revenue, it'll be five or six years. Um, but, uh, yeah, grand bunch, aren't they? See, this bloody thing, this is a bull calf. It's only ten days old, and look at the size of it. But it has grown. I mean, unbelievably grown. You know, really has uh, done well, so... That's why, because some people say, oh, don't bloody give your cows at Richard any more grub. You'll get them out of fat, but more they're purring in, in, in the front end, more they're purring un, in underneath them, you'd think. So more chance of these keeping really strong and growing really fast. I know it has to add up, but... Yeah, real pleased with these. And I was, I, I sort of really worried about this little uh, fella. I really did. He bothered me, I kept going up at night, I won't, I won't go to bed early, I kept going up and trying to give him a bottle. And now, Christ, he's just a total, within a day, he's a total different animal. As long as she don't stand on him, he'll be right. But she, she's a good mum, but she's a bit wooden round him, you know, as in, uh, as in could tread on him. So we'll just have to watch her. Very blustery outside, I don't know that. It's going to be a pig of a day. I've just seen forecast, and it's going to be a pig of a day, as in uh, wet and wild. Very windy down this east coast. Oh, well, I was having my breakfast, I've just been watching news. It boils your piss, doesn't it? I mean, train drivers going on strike. Someone told me they're on 75 grand a year and they're complaining about that. 
Is it working conditions? Is it cold up there? And the, you know, I can't weigh it up. And I don't know, NHS, that needs sorting out, doesn't it? I mean, Christ. I don't know, I really don't know where we're going in this country. We need to sort of sort it out fairly sharpish. Listen, it'll be a, uh, it'll be never, it'll be irreparable. Anyway, wow, wow, because they aren't going into it. Right, I'll go get some jobs done. Go feed other cattle, go around pigs. And I might start that bucket uh, blade today. I don't know if you follow me videos, but if you do, I'm boring you because I've been through this before, but mending them pipes yesterday from the well, what the well does, it pumps it across the field about, oh, I'd say 200 metres, uh, like a, a normal little bar oil pump. Fills these, uh, it pulls this IBC and then this press, little pressure vessel, which you would think when it first turned up, I thought, well, that's not big enough to what I want to do with it. And it wasn't really expensive. I think that was 400. I think the bar oil pump was about 300. And then a lot of messing about with fittings and one thing or another. Go on, you buggers. Uh, and what that does, that pressurises it in there and sends it down into the farm. And uh, it feeds 16 water tanks on this farm. Yeah, 16 water tanks. But if we're pressure washing, or filling the spray tank, we have to sort of, uh, we've got it on a system where we can uh, shut a valve off and put the mains on to, as a backup, you know, there's no chance of that well water getting in the, uh, getting in the, uh, um, getting in the system. Christ, it's good. Getting in the system, because it's got uh, anti-flowback valves and stuff. We had to do it right, right? And uh, yeah, if you've got, if you're in like, where we are, Ville York, where water tables are, and you use a lot of water, and you don't want to sort of fork out 12, 15 grand for a bar up, it's a very cheap system. And it works, you know. Our water bill, unbelievable. Our water bill was, oh, like, summertime, three grand, a quarter, would it be? Three, I think our water bill's 12 grand a year. And uh, it's a fraction of that now. So yeah, it's a very simple system. Oh, it's big. I don't know what you can see in this light because it's barely daylight, but there's six of these fat effers going on uh, on Monday morning to York Livestock Centre. We always sell our uh, fat stock through York. Um, uh, we've been tempted by abattoirs, but I don't know. I think she's going, this girl. This lot, like short, uh, short arm typey thing. I always fancied keeping her for uh, to put against warning, but she's got to the point she's going. And I think the shape of her and the price at the moment. I was re reading the market report of York last Monday fat stock market. Bloody hell, it's warm. Whew, it's made steaming. I was reading fat stock report and there was efforts to three pound twenty a kilo. They'd be tidy stuff, but some of these, what we're selling this week, would be tidy stuff. So I'm hoping for, well, three pound. I really am. I mean, the the three pound twenties will be been really nice. But I would hope three pound a kilo. That's live weight. So every kilo, and I would hope these would weigh. Well, I'd hope she'd weigh late fives, five eighty, six hundred kilo. Yeah, she must. Yeah, she'll weigh six hundred kilo. I'll be I'll be upset if she don't. And yeah, at, um, at three pound a kilo, I mean, this is only a guesstimation, so I might be bloody 30p out and 100 kilo out, but I'm reckoning 590 kilo and three pound a kilo. So I'll let you know in my next video after we've uh, she's sold. And that's there, and then there's, there's half a dozen, so you could be on the list. You're quite a tidy thing. I think there's a sherry and a blue. Sherry won't probably make as much, blue will. But bad they've shifted, all oh, we've done. Now fancy, I tell you. And I can see some of you big boys who fatten a lot, Cal, say, bloody hell, you're doing the wrong thing. But I tell you what, it's worked for us this year. We're, they're getting as much barley. It's a, it's, a, it's a mix of barley, barley and oats, about, I would say, 80% barley, 20% oats. Uh, some quite high protein concentrates and minerals. And then we were feeding them silage, but the corn didn't seem to, it just used to be running through them like water. And we couldn't get, get their guts solid. You know, as in their shit, we couldn't get their shit solid. It was just like squirting out of them, making a right mess in the yard. And it was as though the food was going straight through them. 
So we introduced them onto a bit of air, good air. And uh, and they've been on it since. But oh, the hay could in nearly eat yourself and all. And that's just sort of scratching the ruminant, making the barley go into where it should be. So, but yeah, it's worked this year, it really has. Because these usually, they're, uh, we, are, we are sending a lot of cattle till February. So, but they've cost so much to get here. They really have. We price the barley and one thing or another. I mean, we produce everything, so we have so bad. Like straw, we don't have to go find. We don't have to go find hay. Yes, it's got a cost involved, but if you were buying it all, I know you could say, well, you could sell it and have an easier life, but if you were buying it all, it would just, I don't know whether it figures, I don't really, I really do. Uh, but yeah, quite pleased, because there was one point about six weeks ago, me and Phil sort of stood in them troughs, looking over these gates, thinking we weren't doing the right thing. Um, and then a mate of mine came and he looked with us and he says, he says, you know, just try and get their shit a bit harder. You know, like, look, like elephant shit, that's what he explained. Look, the shit there, it's got consistency to it, you know. Um, whereas before, it was just running straight through. You might think, you non-farming type, bloody hell, he's handling shit. Well, you won't never pick dog shit up or, or if you got, you know, uh, or cat shit or all like that. But these ruminant shit, I mean, it just, there's no tin it. It, um, you know, it's just sort of processed food, really. It's a bit of stink. I mean, you won't want to eat it, but I mean, it don't bother it getting on your gloves, your hands, you know. Or as farmers are maybe just a different breed, I don't know. Just giving fodder beef, so uh, sheep some fodder beef. It's only a few hogs we've got to fatten, I don't know. My dad likes his sheep. We used to have about 300, I think, top. Most we had, I think, 350 breeding ewes. And uh, my mum was shepherd, she's very good at it. But no one else was really interested, so we made, well, my mum fell on a glass bottle actually feeding pet lambs. Cut her hand bad, and I think that sort of changed her mind. We used to help her, but no one was really interested. So when that happened to my mum, she, she sort of decided to give in. But, yeah, yeah, I mean, I think sheep men, there's a lot of. It, it, uh, I think there's quite a, if, if they can feed them right, there's um, there's good revenue in it. You know, lambs have been a good trade this last year or two, so. But they need it, because bah, there's some work involved, isn't there? Right, I'm going to take half a bucket of fodder beef home for cows, and then go get another tumbrel to feed it. Thank you. 